Welcome to VFX and Chill, the week of July 16th. The week of, meaning the day of, Friday, July 16th. As you can see, I'm Seth Worley. And as you can see, this is not Daniel Hashimoto. Nah. Hashi, this is our very good friend, the legendary Harry Frank. Harry, how are you today, sir? I am excellent. Thanks for uh, letting me crash your party. Uh, the the party arrived when you arrived, Harry. That's <laughs> that's the honest truth. Um, so today we are talking about a beloved film. Of, well, first off, tell people a little bit about yourself, Harry. What what do you just in case people have no idea who you are? In case people are idiots. Um, I should. I'm the host. I should be able to. I should be the one who said who tells everybody who you are. I did a bad job it's, here. It's difficult because I, I do a lot of different things. But um, I work. Um, I work on a couple different products. I work on Universe as a product manager and product developer, and then I uh, work with the Trapcode team as well, doing content, uh, some UI UX stuff. Um, so yeah, that's not really a title. That's just kind of a description of what I do. So I work on products mostly, um, make stuff better, make presets, uh, stuff like that. Yeah. Basically all the really rad presets that are in trap code particular, those are, those are hairy. And all the good ones. No, all the good no. ones. Actually all the bad ones too, because I, I mean, <laughs> all the good I, ones I, and the bad ones. See, that's, that's, that's how wide your range is. Harry. If there's a um, terrible preset, I did it. Yeah. Um, uh, and also, uh, Harry built, the, as we know, the VFX and chill, another name for it is the Ecto show. The Ecto um, show. Yeah. And Harry built, uh, Ecto and made it what it is as one of the many universe, uh, plugins that Harry built. Um, and electrify was you too, right? Yeah. Yep. Uh, I mean, it was, you know, it was Hashi's idea and, uh, we just made it, we built it, um, from his... the rules. So anyway, Harry also, uh, I mean, he's got tons of tutorials you guys should watch if you haven't. And um, do you still have like uh, resources and templates and stuff on your personal site? No, they got too outdated and I just turned it into, so in short, no, no, my website is, yeah. Well, I have them and none of you can have them now. Um, So uh, Harry, today we're talking about... um, film that's been remade a classic film that's been remade and we're talking about the remake that's right everyone uh come on and slam if you want to jam we're talking about space jam oh you know what i forgot to do uh i forgot to say hi michael hi michael how's it going oh life is good i'm always excited about talking about a film that has someone with the name michael in it because the original one did it did michael johnson that's the right one (laughs) <laughs> so close okay michael james my that's right <laughs> james, uh, okay uh, we'll come back to it i'll figure this out uh michael uh it's good to have you the original mj him <laughs> not really <laughs> um all right oh, okay Moving this show's on. going great they're never gonna let me run this show without hashi again <laughs> so space jam we have this movie especially <laughs> I mean, Harry, you made the joke when we uh, in our tech check that like we're gonna sit here and recreate shots that like thousands of people worked on. Yeah, like probably thirty FX artists over months working too many hours, uh, and we're gonna be like, let's make it in an hour. Um, well, which is welcome to v- hashtag VFX. Well, now. ninety minutes or whatever, you know, or however long it takes. Is what it's become. Two hours. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> So we have a couple effects that we really liked from the trailer. Um, one of them is Light this flight. guy. Okay. Uh, and Harry, talk about like what stood out to you about this shot. Because I mean, we had a question in the chat, right. which is like, Space Jam has so many effects. Which one are we going to get? Like, I could say yeah, this yeah. shot has so many effects. Which ones? Are, which one are we going to recreate well, here? Well, you, yeah, I was looking up stuff to do, and it was it was definitely. Uh, this when I say or the uh, the Frasier reboot visual effects from the Frasier reboot, <laughs> um, but this one's good too. Yeah. Oh. Um, you know, uh, this. I mean, there's just so much that jumps out that's achievable in particular. You know, like um, 
just like the streaks and the, the explosions and we've got like some volumetric lighting we've got some like neon stroke kind of stuff that we can you know tap into some other stuff in the in the trap code sweet like 3d stroke um it's one of those things like oh yeah well, I'm sure i can do that um and then as we dive into it i'm sure we'll run into a lot of problems but That's it's worth exploring yeah. you know yeah well you know we'll come across the decisions that they had to make as they were making this, like, you know, how much detail you want to put into the individual particles or, you know, there's like a little shockwave that kind of explodes out. Like if you yeah. go frame by frame, it kind of looks like they're just scaling up objects. You know, do you want to put that level of detail in there where it's kind of, you know, there's stuff trailing off of it or, you know, like we'll see what we see. Right. Like, uh, yeah. it's, uh, and, I, I love that big boom shockwave at the top. That's the one where I was like, oh, Harry's coming on the show. We should do that. Boom, right there. yeah. I feel like we've, you know, that looks like you could adjust to one or two presets in particular and make it that little thing. Well, okay, so yeah, hang on. Not, I'm, I'm, yeah, let's start yeah. keeping broad. I'm going to show them the shots we're going to do today, and then I actually want to come back to this and ask you some specific questions, and then we'll dive in. This other shot, it's technically two shots. Um, we have... And this is this is Michael uh, Johnson, or this is Michael. Which uh, basketball, which yeah. basketball sportsman is this one? Uh, that is the king. That is that is the king, King James. Ah, uh, yes, from the Bible. All right, thank you, Michael, for giving us sports <laughs> our sports facts. <laughs> um, uh, all right, so I actually know, do know this is LeBron James, clearly, and because I know quite a lot about sports, especially basketball. I know how to hold a basketball. You... Well, we'll get to that. Um, <laughs> this one, this one has form right there on the ball. Yeah, that's uh, that's I, I, we were talking about this earlier. Like it might actually just be form on there, <laughs> um, quite possibly. So, but it's got like some other like particle-y, like some squares, so it's almost like some techy kind of shapes. So it's a mix of kind of like organic and um, uh, vector shapes. So that'll like, be interesting. Uh, and the trail, the trails are really interesting to me. And I, I'm... Uh... Yeah. The trails are interesting because there's like 20 different ways to do this, and they're all going to have things that are not as good as the other 19 ways. <laughs> it's um, so true, yeah. Right, like I could, we, you know, um, so it's so we, we might just do a few different ways, uh, actually, and and figure out what is not good about this method versus another method, um, or where you know where the shortcomings are that we find. That's perfect. So, so let's start with stomp, stomp, so, boom, stompy, boom, step, boom. Um, what elements are we gonna start with? I'm gonna, I'm gonna. <laughs> Real quick, I just saw in your After Effects window. This is the element you're gonna be working with. I want to give him a little background. Oh, I shot. I, I just background. I shot some uh, elements yeah, for this in my front yard. So, Hello. if you live near me, you don't drive by my house at the right times. Um, I wanted to get a clip of you, where I could be flying through the air, uh, dunking. And even though I'm really good at that, uh, and I do it all the time. <laughs> I mm -hmm. needed to be able to get in a controlled environment, so I just wrapped a green skirt around my waist and did the top part. Oh, I thought those first. were pants. I was I like, wish, those pants? If I had those pants, those I'd pants be wearing those <laughs> every day. God, that's what I want. That's what I want is like a is like a company <laughs> gift at Maxon. I want like a green, green suit. Screen, green, screen, green screen like, pants. No, just the pants. Just the pants. Green screen pants. Chrome <laughs> pants. Uh, well, cause like I'm the, I'm just seeing like a small version of it. So it looks like, like they, they, I was thinking like the, the pot screen company, like ships a three pair of pants with it. Oh no. I, I, they have to be like <laughs> suit pants. They've got to be like well, tailored. Uh, oh, nice. With a nice break, uh, yeah. on your, uh, on your ankle. Yes, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So where your dressy, your dressy green shoes, uh, um, hits just at the right place. Exactly. So. I it then took that and stitched me together um, flying across. And we can actually see a little bit of that here with this little transition to uh, this other shot that I got for the close-up, which is me uh -huh. in my natural state, which is just slamming Gear. dunks into 
hoops and <laughs> basketing the balls. And uh, yeah. So anyway, Harry, I'm going over to balls. your After Effects now. Okay. So wait. Uh, okay. So which one are we doing? Well, I figure well, why don't we start with the step boom because I'd love to see. Yeah. Okay. 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 What you want to ah, do? I got like nothing for this. I mean, that's. <laughs> I guess and the that's whole the point perfect here. Place to start. I know. I like. I. Uh, you know, to not fall flat on my face. Like I did a little bit of like, you know, test this or test that, um, but not. Uh, you know, like there's definitely got to be a level of spontaneity to this. Um, sp uh, we'll just call this the stomp, and then I have. We didn't really get a plate for this, right? So I noticed that there's one with you kind of holding the basketball behind your back, and then I stole an arm, another arm <laughs> from you. my arm naturally does. My, it naturally... I know. <laughs> it becomes very difficult to figure out where an Michael, arm is supposed that, to go. give us that again, Michael. I'm... Yeah, wait. I need a reference here. <laughs> but it's like the thumb. The thumb is in the wrong. So it's, yeah. just, it's just... I mean, really I could close cool. it to get... I know. <laughs> Mamma mia. Well, I, I figure the, there's going to be so much particle stuff going on. So, um, in fact, you can't really see my reference, can you? So I'm going to reference this. Uh, here's the step boom. And uh, so I'm not going to do the open. Like, we don't have a stomp. So we're just going to focus on this little shockwave where things explode. Oh, there's like little bits of stuff kind of shoot out um shockwave uh oh, wow there's all kinds of stuff in here so we'll get as far as we get there's that little arrow that kind of points up and then some particle trails and then it goes up and then it like flies into whatever that thing's called what's that thing that's like hangs over the the thing that's that was a scoreboard right the score i mean is there... i don't know what it's purpose it's serving in the space jam universe um to keep the score well, so let's make a basic, uh, I'm just gonna make a basic floor for now, and I don't know, we'll, we'll kind of come back and uh, I spell the word floor correctly. That's a good start. And we'll flatten this out. I mean, actually, you know what I could do? For now, I'm gonna uh, enable, of course I don't have any 3D, so let's make a camera and make you 3D. There's Seth, and then now I can enable, where is it? Oh, here it is, the icon with the um, the new uh, grid, All right? So this will just be, we'll kind of figure out the, the, the environment later. Like, you know, that's yeah. we're not here to make a, a floor and a crowd and, a, and whatnot, so we'll kind of backfill that. But I mean, you go. could do that easily within minutes, right? Oh, yes, I can make a, a whole crowd, <laughs> you know, and, uh, and a, uh, complex objects and stuff like that. So we're going to have you kind of shoot up. We'll have some trails coming off of you. Um, I'm talking to you like like you're a, yeah. an actual thing. You're my, my layer here. All right. Um, so I'm going to start. Um, I'm actually going to jump over to Illustrator real quick. And we've got that uh, arrow, which I think is just kind of an open. Yeah. Pause like in that first couple frames there. Or you could just loop it like that, too. Well, I could stop it. Let's That's... see. I'm, I'm figuring out how to use, uh, how to do this. I could. Well, I don't know how to do what you what would help to do so it's just gonna well, play actually, it as reference for people yeah no i mean if i bring in the footage all right then then people would be just as a guy screen. i mean if you just moved it over his after effects window we would be done already <laughs> yeah and why why are we doing all this work yeah Step boom. <laughs> Harry, that looks so God. good it's like perfect i know it's, it's like a team of disney <laughs> artists worked on it all right, so I am talking about right here. So there's this arrow that kind of shoots up. And um, so I'm going to draw just the basic shape here in Illustrator. I think this is probably a pretty 
decent way of doing this. So I'm going to use a pen tool and if anything, you can't see your illustrator. When oh, you, well, you can't see my illustrator because I'm not, I didn't share that. Okay. Well, this is going to go super quick and I'll just, um, uh, is there a way? Okay. Can I do it? You can switch mm. over. So just don't stop. Hang on, while you've got that pause, is that space ghost in the top left? Yeah, I noticed yes. that. I we got Space him. Ghost. He's, he's also in a couple other daytime shots. Uh, that made me very excited. Day, space Ghost. Kind of got yeah. a dad bod going on these days. And a lot of these elements in this trailer are not fully animated, I've noticed. They're just like, a couple of them are like, you don't look too closely at it because it's a trailer, you know, shot. Yeah, the, based on the, the trailer I saw, there's like a kind of a Ready Player One element. What I know you're a huge Ready Player One fan. Yeah, that's stuff. not part of VFX and Chill <laughs> Canon, but that's definitely part of Seth Worley and Red Giant Canon. Um, okay. Uh, okay, well, I'll just Ready draw Player this. Player One and passed up the chance to pitch for directing it uh, years ago. Um, uh, well, so anyway, back to... Imagine... Imagine me drawing an arrow in the shape of that arrow that is in the thing. Because so I'm an illustrator though, Harry, doing that. That arrow that we're referencing, there are arrows that look like it in all over the place. And like uh, trap, like in, they're like, I feel like we've got sprites that look like that. We've got HUD sprites that look mm. like that. I, Close. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's kind of open ended, right? It's got this kind of, uh, here if I draw, this kind of. I swear After Effects has an algorithm to automatically choose the worst possible color for the mask. Yeah. Is it like, <laughs> like it tries to match the background or something like every time? Uh, let's find something that's contrasting. There we go. So it's this kind of thing if you kind of kind of see. So it's got this uh, sort of open-ended shape. The only reason I'm going into Illustrator is so that I can kind of uh, fatten it up and then I can easily round the corners. I probably could pull this off with shape layers. But this is really just a couple steps in Illustrator. So, um, yeah. Is there anything, uh, Seth? You're gonna, you're just gonna watch me work? Like, no, I uh, guess I could work. I'm just really fascinated. <laughs> like, like, you're just, you're better at well, this than I am. So I do like just watching. I mean, that, that uh, naturally is my stake as I do the show with Hashi. But, um, I mean, over here okay. I've got <laughs> these ridiculous elements. Um, you know, and you just let me know when you're done with. Uh, with Illustrator okay. side of things. I'm drawing the, I, yeah, I'm just rounding off the caps here. One thing I noticed in the LeBron stuff, which I've I've obviously emulated perfectly, like it's pretty hard to tell the difference there, um, is that the LeBron stuff, let me see, where? You're going to uh, be uh, evaluating his basketball technique too? Yeah. So there's like a very interesting like echo happening behind him of like freeze frame. I noticed that in the comp, I'm like, what? What? Uh, I thought it was a mistake, or I thought you had like multiple versions of it for some reason. Oh, and I then accidentally. I, back. I guess it ended up in the comp that I sent you by accident. Sorry about that. Um, no, no. Well, it's it's correct because that's how the that's how it's got this weird echoey ghosting kind of yeah. thing, which. It's Which, weird. Like, it, uh, and it's not a prominent part of the effect. It's just one of those things that like helps sell it. Um, either that or it's a, mis a mistake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I so the, I tried a little bit uh, to replicate the particles here. And I did, just like you said, uh, the trails. There's 40 different ways to do it. And each one of those ways lacks the other 30. Lacks, lacks the yeah, exactly. that the other 39. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I tried to do a layer emitter um, <clears throat> of me. And that yep. became extra complicated because, so in my scene, I've got, you know, this uh, shot of me in my natural basketball state. And then uh, I also have a, I have some pre-rotoed, pre like my torso, the ball, my arm. Free rotoring is good. Can you show us these things you're talking about? Oh, you can't see them. Oh my god. We're on the we're on the LeBron loop. There. Oh my gosh! Can you believe it, guys? So, uh, I've got my torso. I've got the ball, and I've got my arm, and that's so that. 
as I tr start to apply stuff to the ball, um, I can have it pass behind the torso and behind the arm, etc. I started messing around with the trail stuff. Uh, so right now that's the only thing I've got going on for me. Now, to do a layer emitter, it's going to get a little tricky because I have... I tracked this scene uh, using just like 2D tracking. So I've got I've got this scene. That, where is that? No, it's like not even showing up. Um, I've got a scene null and I've got a, uh, I'm very, oh, you know what? Hang on, show layer controls. There we go. So there's my scene null up there. And then I've also got a flight null that actually exists like way off screen for some reason. It's over here and it's just, and that's my like flight motion. So I am parented to the flight null and the flight null is parented to the scene null. And that way I can, uh, and the reason I have me parented to a null rather than the animation on top of me is so that I can, if I ever wanted to use a different part of the clip of this clip of mine, I can drag it up and down on the timeline. And also just have yeah, so one of the control. One of the challenges with this is like in reality or well, yeah, I guess I mean, he's actually moving like in the shot. Um, in the fifth, in the actual either virtual and real space, he's moving a lot, right? But in your comp space, you're just, you've got a couple elements and things are scaled. So you want the, the stuff to appear as if it's coming off of a rapidly moving object, but you don't really have a rapidly moving object for it to come off of. So you have to yeah. kind of have to have everything kind of shoot backwards or use wind or a combination of those things. And as well as the fact that because there's motion, I have to decide on the front end how I want, basically my particles will move, but then, but then they'll need to move in the scene space as well. And if they move in the scene space, I can't have the emitter be the thing that's moving because then my, if I'm doing trails, the emitter will move and the trails, the particles will not move. So like, I have to decide, am I going to do that with world transform in particular? Am I going to do that in, am I going to, so for example, like if I have a particular layer, ah, P-A-R-T-I-C-U-L-A-R, like it matters. And, and by the way, at any point we can switch back over to you, Harry, to see how your thing's going. Oh my gosh, I'm going to oh. switch back over to you. That looks really cool. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, whatever. All righty. Uh, yeah, oh, this is actually good. So um, I drew I drew the thing in Illustrator that you couldn't see, but that's what it looks like. So I just drew, you know, point, 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 point. And holding shift, kind of universal in, in Adobe products, right? It will constrain it to 90 degrees or 45 degrees, right? So drawing something like this is actually pretty easy. You just hold on shift and click. Click, I don't know if you can see my mouse. I'm clicking. <laughs> in the points where the the corners are so click 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 and make a thing um make a really large stroke with the corners rounded in an illustrator and then just outline it just convert the whole thing to uh to one big shape and then i bring it over here and then um once i have it as a mask on a layer i've applied 3d stroke and i've applied universe glow just to mix things up i know you guys are all about vfx glow uh, they're actually kind of similar, oddly. Uh, What's the difference? A little. That's that's an interesting question. Um, uh, we we independently arrived at the same out with the same result, uh, independent of each other, right? So like uh, the VFX team and the engineer that works on that and Stu's vision of what he wanted his sort of bloomy glow. Uh, the method that they tried, you know, tried a bunch of different things, and the method they landed on uh, happened to be something I stumbled upon actually working on a different plugin to try to make a shadow plugin. Um, and uh, I, I used this accumulation method, and I, I was talking to Stu about it, and he's like, that's exactly what we use for VF, the VFX. Code. So they're similar, but um, they're similar but different. You know, I, I don't know what to tell you. I'm just I'm just <laughs> that, promoting I just I'm just I'm, I'm just promoting universe. 
<laughs> yeah, as you should. But you know, the one point thing, is we uh, love optical glow, and if they're very similar but different, then it's then yeah. we love. I always call it VFX well. glow. It's optical glow VFX glow. Um, you know, one thing I learned uh, from the original developer of the Trapco products, and I don't know if he had a, a technical explanation, but when you're making a glow, your your a better glow is going to result from a large distance between uh, RGB. Like if you have, you know, close together values, things will get mushy. Um, here, let me move this back, right? Notice if I move this, I mean, green's kind of ugly anyway, but uh, the glow itself, um, as I move that green away from the red, or as I move it back down closer to the blue, again, the glow kind of gets mushy. I don't know what the, there's probably a technical reason for it, but, um, you know, when you're picking a color, uh, it's just the best to keep your RGB values kind of separated. Maybe somebody in the chat has something amazing explanation for why that is, or maybe it's just a, just an observation. I don't or know. Maybe everyone so... in the so I've heard nothing from them so far. At least I've heard nothing from them. They're still waking up. Um, actually, it looks like oh, the chat's be actually open. been fairly active, but they're suggesting things for they're suggesting. Well, there's a couple different things. There are people asking for specific effects they want done. Uh, which okay. I'm putting on the list for later episodes. And there's some who are okay. suggesting ways to solve problems that you're going to be dealing with shortly. Oh, okay. And well, that's good. So they're thinking I will, ahead. I will I appreciate call that. attention to them hey, once I'll we get to I'll also throw that. out, guys, if, if there's something you'd rather map. see <clears throat> being do, here's the thing. I'm going to try to do this silly shot here, like, uh, but I'm going to fail very quickly. And if there's anything you'd rather see me do with this asset, I made this asset of me flying through the air. If you'd rather me do anything with it, throw some ideas in the chat there as well. I'm not promising that we'll do them, but if they're really good, I will derail the entire show and do it. Um, so back to you. You know, I, I, I missed the live episode uh, last week, but I caught it... Um, for the weekend and that was it was a that was actually quite a good uh episode of uh, uh it, man last week was one of our i mean all that done that was you know yeah all the you were kind of freestyling um with the people which freestyling with the people which was the, i the know pitch of the show originally laying it down that looks really uh, cool. what are you doing there to make so, that happen so yeah so i'm going so 3d stroke has this uh what they call it what the, what is called the symmetric doubler, right? So it is, um, oops, okay. So I can have, uh, what th all 3D stroke is really doing is just drawing a series of, of particles on the spline of the, uh, the, the mask. In fact, I can turn that off so we don't get distracted by that. Um, so the resulting uh, stroke, I can just double using the repeater and these factors here for how much it is displaced for each repeater is like so. In fact, okay, so I'm going to set this to use a symmetric doubler and use one instance. So there's going to be one arrow in front and one behind. And then it looks like these are pretty close to, yeah, not that close. I don't know. Kind of, uh, oh, and this is also moving, I think. Scale displace. No, it's all using this. Okay, never mind. Uh, you know what? I'm going to bring down the opacity for those instances, though. Can you bring them down? And you're doing this to create a the like parallax depth look of the. Uh, yeah. Oh, I see. Uh, yeah, it yeah. look. It's actually. In fact, it looks like there's only there's only two. And you're doing this all in one layer. That's so smart. I would have like doubled up. I would have like duplicated this layer and. Multi, unmolded so, and everything, and what yeah, is really smart. Um, so I don't really even need. I don't need the extra layer, so I just need the one layer, and it's offset just a little bit, right that. Okay, we'll call that good. And we we'll, we can tweak this a little bit, but uh, that's fine. So it looks like it pops up and does a little bit of a bounce, um, and this is definitely not anything that I uh, invented or wrote from scratch. I just uh, somehow became sort of noted for distributing this expression, this sort of a decaying uh, exponential decay bounce oh, yeah. kind of thing. Um, 
and I'm going to need to find that expression. I might have it saved. So we'll uh, we'll move this in. So I'm going to animate the transform. We got to we got to we got to move on this, don't we? Transform. So yeah. I'm just going to animate the position in uh, quite quickly, and then what we'll do is I'll apply an expression to the that x y position. Somehow I have to make it appear out of the floor. What do they do to get this to? Or is there just so much nonsense going on that you can't really? Yeah, I just kind of, meh. It looks like they kind of mask it out or something like that. Yeah. And there's just so much particle business. Particle, particle business. business. Man, I wish I had a drop right there with a song. Particle, <laughs> particle business. Are we all prepped some like three part harmonies and just and just went right into particle business? The song. Um, okay, so that uh, kind of floats in. And uh, yeah, do like a 20 frame kind of pop in. And then we'll put a little wobble on there. So we'll add expression to the Y, X, Y. And then, God, what are the odds I have this on here? Apply animation preset, and then, no, it doesn't look like I have it. Wait. Dropbox, all where my stuff is. Uh, workflow sync, that's where I throw everything that I want available everywhere. And, of course, do I not have it in there? Oh, I do. Uh, da, 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 da. Inertial bounce. Look at that. There it is. You can drop that in there on that position and yep. 3D stroke, XY position. And amplitude, frequency, Here. decay, that's in seconds? Uh, yes. Yep. So, Where can people find amplitude. this expression, by the way? Um, you what know, I Google? still the have link, The link is in the chat, Seth. Michael! Oh. God, Michael's I all about you this. do your job so well. <laughs> Did he pop up? Michael's like this, uh, like, uh, Jambi from uh, remember Pee Wee's Playhouse, and somebody would be like, oh, "I sure wish I had some cowboy boots." And then like Jambi would like pop up and be like, "Cowboy boots," oh and then he would God. make it happen. How did we never Mike, connect Michael with Jambi? I am. Yeah, yeah, he's like in this little box, and then mm -hmm. uh, and Time then yeah, and you're all like, "I sure wish do I knew more about subdivision surfaces." And then like Michael pops in. I mean, they are very subdivision interesting. <laughs> But this is this is not a 3D show today. No, we do not need any subdivision. This is a, this is a trap today. code show today. <laughs> trap code this show. Is particle business. <laughs> All right. So, so while you do that, I am going to switch over to me because I need some yeah. advice and help. Sure. I want to. I I love how these streaks look. They're awesome. And I am convinced that doing, like, so I could do an instance of tr a particular, but I would have to, like, I'd have to do some pre-emission stuff to make it, like, for, like, f you know, yeah, four or five like seconds. Like, already there. Yeah, yeah, to get the trails already there. They are, they're sitting nicely in the air, though, is the thing. So, like, let me see. Oh, I, I freeze frame. I'm really... <laughs> I'm really the chat, glad you uh, um, wants you to use uh, Saber for those trails because you can decrease um, uh, the size of the end, so you have like a nice decreasing. You can taper uh, it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I have Saber installed, unfortunately. So gonna... Now you can use Ecto and then use Be uh, Bezier Warp on Ecto, which is some way you would get. A, you could, you could actually do a lot of lighting, a uh, flowing lighting effect, lighting or lightning both effects with that i remember a very old uh i'm gonna switch to my me because i'm gonna do hand hand gestures for this next bit mm -hmm. i remember a very old uh tutorial uh, on creative cow way back in the day where they took a bunch of just splotches of color moved them across the screen with motion blur to get streaks of light and then used bezier warp to make that streak of light move around so you can create something pretty static with maybe a tiny bit of flowing and then use bezier warp or mesh warp or some of the other distortion tools and After Effects to make it take the shape and path that you want. So That's you could smart. use Ecto, Bezier Warp to, to taper it, curve it, and do whatever you wanted. That's smart. And that's close in line with what I was thinking of doing. Because I basically, I, I was thinking of somehow generating like lines like this. 
whatever would give me like the most stylized like swoops like this and then doing something like that either with some turbulence uh, and or so like I'm looking at this and there is a flow of like well, turbulence is turbulence. good because you can pin an edge of it as well oh yeah so I just need to dr start by drawing these lines I suppose like should I just draw lines or should I gener is there something I should use to generate like a block of horizontal sweeps um, I mean, 3D hmm. stroke can give you a block of sweet weeps, it and could. it can taper ends as well. What is, uh, isn't there, isn't there, no, wait, that's not the right thing. So let's see, I could, I could draw this, but I feel like we have a generator or something that can do this. Harry, can you think of anything on top of your head? Generator to make a bunch of lines. Kind of thing. Yeah, to make something like that that I can affect, I can affect it and bring it to look like this. But something that would be a good starter. What about like form strings? Is there something or, even more lo-fi than that? Um, I mean, you could do fractal noise and kind of crush it and uh, cr like uh, scale the yeah, how'd that look? Scale it out in X and. Like stretch it out, like huge stretch along yeah. X and um, low complexity, so you're not getting a lot of uh, additional noise in there, and you're just getting like that one layer of noise. All right, let's lower that complexity. Uh... Harry, do you know how the name Trap Code came to existence? People are asking. You know, Peter Norby went through the story once. It wasn't a terribly exciting story. Um, he was just kind of this young, you know, coder dialing into like early, early forums and stuff like that. And that was just kind of like his uh, moniker, right? Like he would, you know, everybody's, you got to pick something. So uh, it was just those two words together. The, the, I forget where the trap came from. I think it's something with coding, right? Like there's a, a coding, testing, debugging, something like that. You know, it's just like a, a, a couple words that he plucked that he thought worked well together. I wish I had a better story than that, but I think that's often how names come to be, right? Just, uh, it sounded cool. Yep. Basically. And the URL was available. That was back in the day when you could still like name products and usernames like random cool things rather than what they are. Nowadays, you have to name it exactly what it is. In plain English. So this yes. is promising. I just crushed some fractal noise, like you said, and yep. I animated the offset turbulence. Mm -hmm. And maybe even, huh? Yeah. Maybe even more in the X. And is the, what's the complexity right now? Complexity is at one. Can I go lower the middle? Oh, okay. No. You have, to, you have to have one, at least one layer of noise for it. At least one complexion. One complexion. That was my, my boy band when I was in high school. One complexion. One complexion. Was the complexion pizza? Yes, the complexion was pizza. <laughs> Sounds like a uh, weird Harry, code. Harry Frank, while we're on the topic of where names came from, how about that gray machine? You know, we, I, we were just talking about how, you know, like it's a combination of things that count, sound cool and uh, the URL was available. It's it's kind of that, but, um, you know, actually the, the initial uh, start of that that term, like where I, I'm like, well, I need a website to do stuff. It was actually, I was starting out um, in as a recording studio because that was, kind of was where I got my start. Well, that's the, the industry I started in. And uh, I found myself freelance by way of my the place that I was working basically closed down. Um, and I was like, well, let's see if we can launch a recording studio because you know I had some money and not a lot. I had a lot of time. So uh, I try I, I, uh, I was in Detroit at the time. Uh, so I was just trying to capture the sort of like gritty workhorse kind of feel 
of uh, not very flashy, but very functional. And uh, that's just kind of, uh, that's kind of how it started, I guess. Um, there's a band that I was very much into at the time, uh, also called Secret Machines. Um, so I think that had some influence on me. Is that what the uh, other band was so angry about and raging against? <laughs> <laughs> Secret Machines, they call themselves Space Rock, although they took a hiatus for a very long time as one of the mem members, actually there were two brothers and one of the brothers passed away. Oh. Um, they took a hiatus and they actually just put out an album in the last year. And since there you go. we've got historical knowledge here, um, Red Giant. Where the name came from? Yeah. I think that was Drew and Sean just coming up with random cool things. Yeah. You know what's funny is I mean, the a, original... I know it's a type of... It's a it's a, a stage yeah. in the life of a star. It, start, you know, it starts the right. white dwarf, goes to Red Giant, blah, blah, which is why we did that April Fool's joke about Red Giant is collapsing and becoming Black Hole. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the original... Uh, company name before it was Red Giant was actually Redshift LLC. Like, I mean, it was Redshift, right? Um, they must have run into uh, issues, uh, as there are there are some other companies also named uh, Redshift. You know, you might have heard of some. It turns out there are. Yeah. So I think they just kind of. Boy, I'm. Uh spinning my wheels here. I was just trying to make, um, I was just trying to steal the camera move. What did I do? Oh, I'm looking at the left view. Gosh. Um, so yeah, that was, that was basically it. So I think they just wanted to go with that sort of spacey, spacey kind of thing. And red, in fact, it wasn't even that the URL was available because for the longest time it was redgiantsoftware.com. Uh, I still get emails to redgiantsoftware.com. So, how's it going over on your okay. end, Harry? I've been actually yeah. I I need to start making some particle business here. I was just black uh, getting the I kind of match the I jumped over to the the shot here and uh, enabled my grid and just kind of did a basic you know a couple of keyframes to to mi mimic the camera move that they've got in there. So I can so I've got a camera move because we need a camera move. Um, and then we're gonna st well I'm gonna pick a thing. Let's just pick a thing. Oops to do here. Another thing. Uh, let's start with, I think these like streaks. There's like these little streaks that shoot out here. And are these, these just kind of shooting? Yeah, that should be pretty straightforward. The diagonal ones, the ones that are like fireworks. Yeah. Yeah. The kind of the trail, the, yeah, the little tracers there. So let's do that because we need to cover up this transition. Oh, and then, yeah, I've got my little bounce on the uh, arrow. Um, so that kind of comes in. Um, I uh, I think I told you, both you and uh, Seth and Michael, I, <laughs> I normally have a faster computer that I work on, but because I'm using kind of this, you know, top secret version of uh, particular, and I went to install, reinstall it last night and you know like with your render engines and components kind of get installed everywhere um i could not get particular to work and this was like 12 30 last night i'm like oh my god i can't get this to work at all it's like uninstalling reinstalling and uh fortunately on my mac pro here um it was still working so so yep yeah, got a little bounce in there um, it's got the exponential to decay. All the exponential decay really does is, is look at the, the, the overall speed of the thing that it, you've applied it to one frame before a keyframe. And then from there, it triggers a sine wave times an exponential decay value. So as you multiply an exponential decay and the sine wave, it just does that sort of wobble and that triggers that right at the keyframe. Um, the last keyframe basically run well, not the, the it uh, well, actually, I guess it's continuously applying it, but you know, as it comes to a stop, we'll see that sort of wobble in there. So let's make some explodies and particular streaks. 
and there. track code particular how many times I've applied particular to a layer <laughs> first used it in 2007 when I was working at WDIV in Detroit NBC affiliate I'm like, oh this is cool look at that organic uh, what's it the organic lines the one that everybody uses and everything is that what it is uh, Oh, yeah, yeah, that yeah, one. Because it's like the one, the one that in, was uh, like in Quantum Bond Solace movie. or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Skyfall. It was in the Good Bond movie. The oh, really Sky oh, yeah. Movie. I'm going to make a second camera here just so I'm not dealing with that camera move while I work on things. And then I'm going to hop into the designer and let's make an explosion. In fact, I think I might be able to apply some stuff that uh, uses some of my planning here. So in the presets, there's some like basic starting points here like just basic explosions without a whole lot of like actual particle design um that's actually that's actually pretty close um i think we're just seeing that top there so i can probably no i don't want to delete that so we'll make that instead of a, a uniform emitter we'll just change that to directional emitter so it's kind of just shooting upward Boom. So this is, oh gosh, you guys are right on top of my, <laughs> okay, I'm going to scooch you over. There we go. And we want oh, it's an explosion. We want a directional emitter. Um, and is it going, yeah, I want it to go up. So probably negative. This is planning. Nope. I Minus want it to 90. Shoot. Why not, I want it to shoot straight up. Yeah, hold on. Ah. Now I've got gravity working against me. Oh, yeah, so my gravity. Okay, I'm going to reset gravity for now. That's the. Yeah, and it's got a really high velocity. So let's. Well, so much for using that preset. It was close. <laughs> so I want it to shoot outward. I want to have it spread quite a bit, so I'm turning off the directional spread. So I just want it shooting in kind of like a hemispherical direction. So why one random little particle is shooting off there. There, all you got to do is change the random seed. There we go. So let's go ahead and go on like that. So let's just crank up the velocity. Probably even more than that. I'm doing that thing. I hate when people do that. The the sound effects when you make stuff. Oh, I it's better than what I do. I'm like moving this over here, doing this thing. Right oh yeah. Here. Optical glow. It's time. And I do that while make, teaching class, your, uh... class on Zoom. Like a college class, I will do that. Like they they are paying money for me to teach them how to do things, and I'm just singing to them that singing I'm opening montage. my finder window. 80s montage songs yeah um oh, there was a composer that did that he was like the the 80s montage composer like the 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 karate kid oh wow uh you know like you know you the was that you the best song uh, oh yeah i know what you're talking about he would do this yeah yeah he was like we were like oh we need an 80s montage song call what's his face Oh, but I thought you meant like he would do that, like he was known in the studio to sing his process aloud in his style. Uh, <laughs> well, maybe he did. Maybe that's how he came to be the montage writer. It's like, you should just do what you love. Find a way to get paid to do what you love. Um, you like you like doing montages, so... Speaking of different montages, this has nothing to do with different montages. Oh, Michael, you're still on screen. Bye. Um, any, uh, we all been staring okay. at Michael all this time. I need a uh, uh, so I've got this. This looks kind of cool. Um, I need a. It looks ridiculous. What it does it looks like I'm farting my way across the sky. But <laughs> I need. Maybe. Uh, you are. Uh, uh, what kind of? I, I have ideas on what kind of stuff I can go do now. But I need to curve this like that. And 
it, that's a simple thing that like I feel like the only ways I know how to do it are are way too complex. Just curve curve it down like it's like gravity yeah, pulling. Like I need to bend it. How about literally? There's a plugin called Bend It. CC Bend It. Listen, I didn't <laughs> set you up for that. I know. <laughs> It's like God. I need to just. Did you try something. typing I need to do something particular in the search? Here. Yeah, I have a particular need for something. Oh my God. Um, Seth, the yeah. chat wants to know how they could sign up to join your college classes. Oh, great question. Uh, you're in it right now. This is literally the experience yeah. they get. Going to uh, sign up. That's college class. College, college, college. All you have to do is just text me. Uh, no. Uh, you know, I've thought about doing. I would actually love Professor to know if I, if I if I did if I did like a master class kind of thing at some point. Well, yeah, whatever. I've considered it, but I keep falling off because it's kind of my full time job to teach stuff. Let's see. All right. All right. So and the answer basically yeah. is attend whatever college you're a professor at. Yes, I am. I am a. Uh, I'm an adjunct professor at Lipscomb University right now. Um, and I am teaching an undergrad VFX class this next semester that I believe is already full. So if you were planning on applying to this college last minute, I don't know how colleges work. I, I went to a little bit of college. Uh, something's happening here. This bend it, I need to put this on top of a layer, don't I? So this is where it starts to get confusing. It's like what f effects understand masks and what don't um so what i'm gonna do is i've got this going I'm gonna but i need kind of a background plate don't i i'm gonna pre-comp this because why not and i didn't name that pre the chat wants uh is making many suggestions including bezier warp cc bendit puppet pin mesh warp and wave so puppet pin is how i would have i i've thought about doing it um but that felt incredibly stupid but you know what why not why don't not I that you're calling somebody's suggestions no 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 it's what i because it's what i thought of first so therefore it's it is incredibly stupid it's a stupid thing to do but here i go Puppet pin, Again. puppet pin. And I'm just going to do... <laughs> this is so... This feels so stupid. All right, here we go. I'm going to pin this. Let's say if it looks right, it's not wrong. If that's, it looks right, that's... you didn't. You might have still broken it. And pinned. Ooh, God. I think, you know, that's something like you see so many questions in discord and for uh forums and well do people use forums anymore not really but it's like is you know if i do it this way is that right and it's like <laughs> if it looks right it's right like it doesn't matter it doesn't matter no and that's that's how really I but i'm on a live show right now <laughs> so yeah. it's a little so more... you need the quickest way of getting it done yeah i think that's more what it is is like i don't know all right so let's see i just did this number yeah, yeah, something's happening there. Oh, it's I know what's happening there. So, um, Seth, the chat is complaining about your negativity. They say that we need positive self-talk in a stream and that you should believe in your dreams. These people are new to the Seth World brand, aren't they? Uh, you know what? You're right. I'm going to accept that these people are tuning in to see me do some After Effects and next to someone who's good at After Effects. And so that's 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 the brand here. So I I'm gonna accept that. And I I'm 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 after effects. I'm I'm comp talking or whatever we decided the term was where you're like half paying attention to what you're saying while you're paying more attention to what you're doing. And hang on a second. I need to do this to avoid that issue. Are you listening to reply or are you listening to understand? <laughs> that that was in a book I was just reading. There's levels of, of listening. Oh, um, listening ignoring. in order to reply. I was like, listening well, to reply. Yeah. Like, well, because some people some people listen in order to to just get to the yeah 
yeah. For, for, for the record, Seth, I do like the look of your streaks. I think you're you, yeah. you're hitting in a good way. I think some um, some um, displacement or turbulent something would be good yeah. there. I don't think just turbulent noise that you need that you need something that also does blurring, which I think you might just do in super comp. Use a fractal yeah, noise layer. I'll do that for sure a, in super yeah. comp, like and do the some blurring in the background and some actual noise from it. Um, I think I might need to layer some of this on top of itself because there's, there's just a bunch of cool junk happening. Okay. I, um, yeah, pardon me. I have to like reply to the director of engineering of, of Maxon <laughs> because, uh, uh, -oh. Harry's in trouble. Yeah, no. Did we get you in trouble? Uh, no. Good. So, like, take a number. <laughs> Engineering you're on, director. You're on the internet live <laughs> saying that, so. Uh, to... <laughs> no, he's a good, good guy. Someone in chat uh, is uh, asking how we reckon they did it in the actual movie. And the answer is they could have also done it. We, we were pretty sure they used form on the ball. This could also be particular or fractal noise and like well, we don't know we know we know that like you know disney is is a client but um i think most of the disney stuff is like used in their parks and and for events and stuff like that i don't know how much they're actually using it in future films but it's quite possible i mean i've you know that ball to me looks spot on like um uh the 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 fractally kind of thing around the ball looks oh, yeah. exactly like form so it's it's quite possible but who knows is uh, like i said there's probably 30 people that worked on these well probably fewer than that well maybe who knows between the comping and scene assembly and all that kind of stuff um who, who are we on we're still on seth okay i can go over to you let's go over to you i, was just well, I don't have anything uh well i'm noticing that the we don't really have a a backdrop so i'm just using the same backdrop that you have given me and then yeah i don't well, know if i can do, do dark yours on black because i think that one is a darker scene yeah it just it needs to go over something because the particles kind of need to blend in oh yeah eh. um but this is just lowering the exposure the or something or yeah exposure's not gonna cut it um, or maybe it looks the two. Wow, my effect actually doesn't look as bad as I thought it was going to. I need to listen to people in the chat more often. <laughs> did, did they hear that? Did they hear me say that? Let's see. Okay. All right. That's success. We are one hour in, and we have successfully made two elements. So I've got the explosion and the arrow. Poof like that and it looks like um there's like some little particle-y bits now what's funny you might have a very interesting discovery here or not who knows i have uh we have in there okay so let's make another system i can fact um no uh yeah uh we've got we've got this one that looks like Oh, I turned, you know, I turned the lead particles all the way down to zero uh, just because we don't need to see them, but that's what they look like. So I'm actually going to take that system, duplicate it. So we've got another set of explodey bits here. So turn that up and let me change the random seed so this is not in the same space as that first one because it looks like there's just some like little debris bits shooting off and if i oh wait i'm in the wrong place and i need a preset i need a sprite um and so let's change this to a sprite particle and then if i choose a sprite let's see in the water is that showing up okay because we've got modal dialogue on top of a modal dialogue here so um yeah 
great if we had search in here. There's a section, not the organic matter, not the symbols. Of course, it's the last section. Isn't there one that is uh, water? Water. I'd like to get to updating these. Okay, yeah, ice flake. Here it is. Um, I, I was watch, um, watching some hockey promo once, and I saw these little like bits floating around. I'm like, oh, that looks cool. We should have something like that. Mm -hmm. um, I need to unmalt the individual particles. And we want these to not face the camera. So I'll uncheck that. So these will all shoot in random directions. Let's go size rotation. Uh, just random rotation. And they look kind of glowy. Here, well, I'm, I'm just going to get that far. And let's go back to what I was like, you know, because I made these shapes. Like these shapes look very similar to the <laughs> almost like they but you know what them. you know i think it's just coincidence because these look like they are they look like they're curved and are more 3d i think yeah sure so not saying i mean i'd be, that'd be great if disney was using our stuff but close enough close enough for uh for a, a youtube show so I probably need fewer of these. Um, by the way, this explosion behavior is eventually going to change from this particles per second math that you have to do from like, it's particles per second over one frame. So you have to do the math to figure out how many particles you actually end up with. Um, oh, and I need to not have a random loop, but I need to use a random still frame because it's a quick time. So it's going to, yeah, there we go. And then we'll have it kind of rotate degrees per second. That was a nice thing that we added in the last one. Because it was like revolutions per second or something like that. So you would turn it up a little bit and these things would just go. Oh, yeah. They just go crazy. Spinning like crazy. Yeah. Um, so there, that's a little bit more manageable. And then are these tinted? Or should they be tinted? Were you kind of kid when you were like, using a coloring book and you would like look at the front cover to make sure that you would get the colors right. No, no. And everybody, I... everybody would be like, you know, you don't have to make it look. And I'm like, I have to make it look like the color of like the, the front cover. So that's, that's what, what I'm exactly like now I mean. as an adult, as a kid, I was like, mm. this is going to be whatever I want to color it. It's going to be silly Batman's and then purple. it'd be ugly and yeah. I'd be mad at myself. <laughs> Should have made it look like the cover. Yep. Um, it looks like there's like some sort of glow or something on it. I'm going to pull in a little bit of tint so these aren't totally white, but I don't feel like these are really a solid uh, color. Um, do we? Oh, we don't have it in this version. We do. Don't. Okay. Never mind then. I can't randomize the color. All right. Do, 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 do. Singing montage. Hmm. All right, so um, I'm trying to look at all the stuff I can kind of combine into one. Well, I didn't even notice there's like a weird grid that happens around who that other basketball player is, if, if somebody I'm supposed to recognize. Those things all shoot oh, is that out. A basketball player? Yeah. I don't oh. know. No, wait, is that a real person? or is, I think that's one of the goons. They have oh, the goon well, it's going to be you. It's going to be the Seth goon in Seth there. Goon. Is there anything else? Other than that, it's like some geometric stuff that I need to... Hey, Harry. Um, uh, I've got a hey, question yeah. for you about Electrify. So yeah. I'm over here yeah. playing with these, and I decided to drop Electrify on top of here. And there's a few frames where it, looks, where it looks really cool because the blue pops off of the pink really nicely. Hang on, where is it? It happens like... Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward. Oh, you know what? Sorry, it's because I have it here. Uh, I'm curious how to get more... Where do I go to get more, more or less. this happening more often? 
my guess is what so what it, what it's doing is automatically cyc cycling right yeah so if you set the the whatever that i think it's the evolution right like if you just set that to zero and then manually offset it to that spot that you like and then you can just like slowly animate it through that section oh great so that makes sense evolution right? speed down and then animate the offset thank you sir yeah so yeah uh move the offset until it, it'll probably it hopefully should hit that section that you're wanting because it's sweeping through the luminance it's basically it's exactly like colorama it's it's a it's a RB, rgb wrap that it just um what's the, uh, what, the so what's what's 100 um on this scale is it is it relative uh, to the, the, to the, the offset yeah is it relative to the timeline it's probably frames, I'm guessing. Okay. But that's a good question. It's 100 because that's the default when I add a slider in universe. <laughs> okay, so let's make some magic here. Um, so this was a... Are we on me and I were on you? Now we're at... Oh, shoo, there we go. <laughs> so we've got these like shockwave things here. And uh, I'm trying to see if they really change over time or not. Or I wonder, I wonder. So you know what I'm going to do? We'll just make some custom stuff, a uh, custom particle like that. And we'll include it with the this uh, setup right here. So everything's just kind of coexisting in the same 3D space. So I need to make a custom particle that is that kind of curved uh, shockwave boom. So we'll call this the shockwave boom particle. This probably could be square. I'm going to say maybe 900 by 900. And then make a solid and then it's a quickest, easiest way to make a really accurate arc in After Effects. Really accurate arc. Oh, um, let's see. I'm starting with a circle and then making it... Let's I guess I can't un... Okay. Wait, can I just delete a point? Yeah, no. Oh, wait. And then can I say, why can't I make it unclosed? Okay. I'm sure. So. Let's let the uh, the chat catch up. <laughs> and then uh, I'll just draw a stupid arc. And then somebody's going to come and be like, hey, dummy, you got to do this <laughs> thing. I'm going to draw a tangent like that. Tangent like that. I mean, it doesn't have to be a perfect. Arc. It's just I'm trying you only need to... two changes. That middle one is unnecessary. Fine. Yeah, Michael well, has this but, habit of okay. just chiming in with right things every now and making then. you feel bad. Yeah. Okay. Well, no, it's just you can use as many as you want. It's just I, I it's just fewer things to try to adjust. Okay. And then uh, what am I doing here? So I'm going to. Uh, let's use, you know what? We're going to, we're going to do particular inception here. So I'm going to use particular. So I'm going to add, I think more detail to this than they've got on there. It doesn't look like it's animating that much, but I'm going to use, um, particular to render from that stroke and kind of evolve and shoot off of the, this line. And then you keep talking while. I, I want to know what particular. this is. How did, what is this? Who's I get these what? random frames where... Is, are you still having problems with Electrify? No, I took Electrify off. I got okay. this random where this huh. happens. What is that? Uh, it I happens on one frame. It. It's like, do 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 bah! Bye. Um, I don't know. Is it Optical Glow? Is it heat wave? It's just a cache thing, I guess. Oh well. It could be a. Um, I don't know. 
probably my I'm also favorite. seeing it uh, 200 pixels by 100 pixels or whatever <laughs> is it the oh that's not that's what I'm rendering it is that what you're not what you're eh. finalizing it? Uh, we'll just upscale it when we're done so I'm going to use a text slash mask um, and to find the text slash mask layer which is hard to say um, and I should name my layers and we'll use a layer called mask instead of black solid one. I am the layer must be 3D. Okay, layer is now 3D. And I think I have to reset this. This now to the mask. And what else do I need? I need to emit from the edges because it's an open spline. And there we go. So now we're emitting. Let's turn up the particles per second. And Boy, I don't remember if in this build of particular, if the mask comes over. It does not come over. So I don't know. So we'll be working outside of the designer. So we'll have this shoot um, not uniformly. We'll also have this one shoot directional with a very narrow direction spread. And then rotate this that way. Right? What do I need? Negative. Oh, Harry, I'm liking this. Nice. I yeah, like so so it's going to kind of evolve. So we yeah, there's a lot of stuff we can do to have this evolve, and then we can make this a particle uh, in our other system, right? So, cool. um, in fact, oh, I can't have this. <laughs> okay, keep thinking of stuff that's not here. Um, it would be nice if I could align this to a grid, but I guess random like this is also okay. Um, I think. Um, well, uh, we'll have the particle kind of scale down over time. So size over life, we'll set the preset to open that up so you can actually see it using the scale down. And always add a little bit of life random because everybody's life needs a little bit of randomness. Um, yeah, I just 50. go through and add random on everything. See, is size random, though, can add kind of like a noise component to your if it's, stuff. Yeah, uh, especially if it's if it's based if you're doing like streaks, then yeah, it, it creates a, a noisiness. Which for a long time that's how I but honestly I work I got to know a particular so well before I ever learned what displacement maps were. And uh That's how you got your job. I got my job by learning monster. how to use Particular the same year I learned how to use After Effects. Um, and one year later, I I did, I got, I did, yeah, I got my job here. And then I had to learn how to make, after, how to use After Effects. Uh, <laughs> and it was like a couple of years into my job here that I learned what displacement maps, how they actually worked, and realized, oh my God, all these things I've been doing in Particular have just been me manipulating. I could have easily done, like I would create instances of Particular when I could have just made a solid and thrown a displacement map on it or or noise on it. Well, that's just that's just learning, right? Yeah. You know? I do know. Uh Very much you do know. know. All right. Let's see if we can just do this kind of simply, like having the turbulence affect the size rather than getting fancy. And maybe we'll just kinda of end up blurring this. Um, I do feel like the particle life needs to be a lot shorter to kind of make this line less thick. Oh, too many parameters. It's here. No, not size. Life. Okay. Point one. Yeah, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. Rather than, okay, I might pivot a little bit here rather than this kind of noisy look i wonder if i zero out the velocity and make this a parent emitter which means i need to run jump into the designer which means we're not going to see the emitter so i might need to kind of switch this back to a box emitter for now and uh i'm just going to build the look of this real quick here Okay, well, look at all this nonsense. Okay, so my idea here is one not moving 
system. So we can zero out this velocity, set this emitter size, just kind of for now, very small. Yep. So in fact, um, yeah, we'll do this. We'll do explode and set this to a very high particle count. So we just got like blap, like a bunch of particles. And those will be uh, a parent, or we'll make a child emitter off of that. So emit for parent. And then these will go directional. And I rotate that always the wrong way, every single time. Right? Uh, is it negative 180? Right? No, negative 90, sorry. Because it's always turning away from the camera. So I just want them kind of shooting to the left. Um, and I have, boy, I have a huge amount of, what's it called? Fast physics in this one. So I'm going to set that to zero. I'll go down here and we'll add fast physics. Nice thing. I don't know if everybody knows option, alt option. Clicking on any of these will add a default block rather than forcing you to use a preset. Like if you click on a plus, oh, I didn't know that. Use, use a preset that you probably don't need. Um, yeah, just alt click on the block. Alt and then click. Oh, well, there you go. Uh, alt option click. There we go. Harry, we'll if you could it. talk through a little bit more what you're thinking of instead of what you're instead of narrating what you're doing, like you talk about why you're <laughs> yeah. doing what you're doing. The chat well, is getting a little yeah. confused what you're trying to do. Yeah, I know because I, I have to. Um, here, this will make sense in just a second. Sorry, what the heck is he doing? So I had to switch away from using the uh, mask. Um, oh God, what's going on now? So, so my idea is that I want these particles uh, on the mask, right? So I just want one burst of particles on the mask, and then I want those to be parent particles to child particles that are sort of drifting off of those those particles if that makes any more sense the problem is that right now in this this version in particular the mask does not import into the designer so i can't see those particles so that's why i had to change to a box emitter to um fix it so now i'm going to switch back to the there we go okay now 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 this should be working so system two should be a, ah, I think I, I, sorry, I reassigned the wrong one. So this is going to be emitting from parent. So now these should be there. Now, now it's doing what I was trying no. to do. So I was, tr so I was trying to get that sort of shock wavy fractally um, coming off of this arc shape kind of thing. Sorry, I know I kind of, we kind of drifted uh, into oblivion there for a second. But there was a plan. Yeah, that's what we do. I'm to, also to, trying to... to be fair, chat. He's making a much more interesting and organic yeah, looking shockwave I'm, than the reference has. Like he, I'm making he... it better than yeah. Disney. So take that, Disney. Um. All right. So what is the color? Color is blue. Easy enough. Uh, let's make a blue particle. System two is that shock wave, and then we'll go to the particle settings. It, I don't. I, I, I'm happy to be the first person that's hosting this that makes people chime in to say, "What in the hell is he doing right now?" No, no, no. They're, you're not. Not the first. the first, and you won't be the last. No. Okay. Absolutely won't be. Last. Where is he going with this? Is he just? moving his mouse around on the screen to ride out the hour and then be like, well, tune in so, when we get this done. That's fine. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, I'm going to set this to use a little less influence on the size and maybe a little bit more uh, fractal influence on the position. Just kind of getting that. Uh... There. I mean, it's, yeah, we've got an hour and we're one person and uh, I'm going to kind of punt with this right now. I'm going to, uh, let's see. That should be affecting it. Particle life. Okay. 
Okay. I'm going to put this in uh, as the particle, and then we'll refine uh, as needed. Okay, so, 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 we'll go to my stomp here, and then I uh, need my shockwave boom particle. And then, in particular, we're going to add another system that is using, well, let's just duplicate this one. We've got another set of particles that's probably going to be a lot fewer of them. And we will set that system to use as a particle, a custom particle. So particle system four. Yes, we're going to use a sprite. We're going to use the layer that is the shockwave boom particle. It's not that big. Hold on. I mean, that's looking great. Cross your fingers. Because it gave me a really weird error. It wasn't that big at all. Okay. All right. God. <laughs> it was like, your comp is like 11 billion by 11 billion. Do you want to proceed? Um, <laughs> but it is not 11 billion. So let's go back here. Um, <laughs> okay, so I need to, um, you know what I'm going to do is, uh, go back into the designer and I'm going to, um, work with the motion of this particle first before we get too far. Uh, so I'm going to switch this back to just a regular old sphere and we want these just kind of shooting straight out. Um, I think for what we want here, um, a disk, because a disk emits only in two axes, right? Yeah. So these are going to be big, right? So it's kind of shooting along the floor, but if I change these to the big shock waves, then we're just going to see, uh, well, we're going to see those big shock waves at that center point. And then I'll probably need to orient them correctly along the axis. Um, so let's go back and I'm going to change the particle type back to the shockwave boom. So particle, set you back to a sprite. In fact, it should just change to that shockwave. Yep, okay. And they're all like random rotation. We don't want any of that. We want to zero all that out and then have it orient along the motion. Obviously, we want these a lot bigger. Oh, yeah, three. Come on, computer. It's, uh, in fact, how long did I make that? That's only two seconds. That's not too bad. Um, it suddenly erased my particular layer. Okay, let's undo that. I don't know how I did that. There we go. God. Okay. Um, we're using the sprite. The sprite should be set to the shockwave layer. The size is three. We don't want three. We want something more like 300. I don't want any size random because it looks like they're all the same size. And I want to orient this along the motion. Turn that up to 100%. So it's going to move along the path of of its movement. I'm going to solo that layer. And I'm wondering why they look all dumb. Why do they look all dumb? They're shooting outward. I don't have any additional rotation on them. I don't have, oh, I have random rotation. OK. Too many parameters. Okay, so at some point, these should all, there we go. They should all align kind of in the same direction. 
Um, and it looks like we probably need fewer particles here, but um, let's say, let's drop this by, by quite a bit. Let's say like 200. Uh, my After Effects just crashed, so. No. I, I literally was just getting it looking great. I was very excited to show it to you guys. Seth, did you, did you forget to hit save again? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Let's find out if After Effects saved it, because I definitely did not hit save recently. OK. Whew. Oh, you know, hey, uh, well, never mind. Oh, I soloed. Uh, I'm sorry. I was like, why does this look even worse than it did before? Because I have not everything running. OK. Man, OK. I mean, this is getting there. Um, you can see kind of where we're going with this. This is really tough to pull off in like an hour. Um, let's uh, just kind of jump into speed mode here. Um, and I've got my Seth, my Seth jump here. <laughs> and... What do I do? Do I just set you to like a screen blend mode so you're just kind of mixing in with everything? Or do I just put you behind? I'll put you, yeah, there we go. You can do that. Okay. I'm, I'm not going to, I know these, uh, these shockwaves still need kind of a bit of work. I think it was an interesting topic to cover, but it, I think they still need, I think they need to be bigger and, um, maybe I'll just make them a little bit bigger for now and then we'll kind of move on and, got time i can go back and tweak these uh so what system are we on we are on system four we want to go to particle size why is the particle size set to zero particle size is system four size it's definitely not zero System four is the shockwave, right? Yeah, if I turn that on and off. Okay, well, I don't know what you're set to zero. I never set that to zero. Just Seth, Patrick at... Adkins from the chat is asking how much it costs to license the Joe oh, Esposito song, You're the Best, that Harry Joe was Esposito! Because he wants that to license it. that song to play during Seth's okay. slam dunk. Oh my God. I was like, just could pass the hat around. <laughs> I am in. Sorry, I was being an idiot and I was looking at the wrong size parameter. Also, right, so Hashi just has chimed in on chat. He says, This looks insane. Wish I could join you live, but we're driving through Wyoming where they don't allow visual effects. They don't. This is one of the shame things about Wyoming. It's one of the reasons why Hashi can't be on the show, it's because he went to okay. Wyoming. We just alienated all okay. of Wyoming. Wyoming's great. All um, three visual effects artists in Wyoming are pissed now. Well, yeah, get over it, guys, girls, okay. whoever you Eat are. Eat your cheese curds and be happy. Can that be the name of the, of the episode? The episode. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I keep saying that um, that I'm done with this shockwave. I'm just not happy. You know what? I think is going to tie just this a little bit together is that fact that this is using a normal blend mode, which is horrible. And why would I ever want to do that? There, that helps a lot. OK, I'm going to move on from this. I mean, their original actually doesn't really look that great either. I mean, it's it's super quick. It really just needs to kind of do a, a quick burst into frame. So um, that's a little better. You know what I want to do, though, is I'm going to make another comp, and then we'll cover another topic, which is like getting these trails as uh, as Seth kind of shoots up into the thing. Yeah. Whatever that thing is, the scoreboard. Um, and this is where we're talking about uh, how there's like a gajillion ways to do this. Um, and I don't have my camera pointing upward, but we'll just kind of go with that for now. Uh, I can angle it down just a little bit, but, or not angle it down, angle it up. There's my. My, I'm sure these are. This is an amazing looking camera move with the linear keyframes and all. Uh, 
I just want it to kind of get a little bit of that up angle there. So we're talking about like different ways of trails coming off of things. Um, and uh, how about I make my, my screen a little bit bigger? Uh, I think a, a really good way uh, in a situation like this, where's my reference? Um, as we look at this, there's trails coming off of very like specific parts. Looks like they're like kind of coming off of the the, I don't know where that one's coming off of there, but like off of the, mostly the feet and the hands, and then one kind of around the midsection, I guess. Um, so Very a good nice way to, way do to th put that, Harry. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll make a separate uh, section here for streaks, and we'll kind of talk about this. Streaks. Um, so what the way I would do this is, you know, being that I've got this item in motion is I would use uh, light emitters for this. And uh, I'm going to set uh, a couple of lights here. And you've got to name them emitter. We'll call this emitter one. And I'm going to make this a spotlight. And when I'm using uh, lights for emitters, uh, I'm a big fan of turning off the auto orientation, which is kind of a muscle memory thing for me. What the heck is a shift? Command. No, that's opacity. Shift option. God, what is it? Uh, I'm like, oh yeah, I totally know it. Where is it? It's, it's under the layer too. It's under uh, transform. Oh, it's R, not O. Shift, command. Shift, option. Oh, jeez. OK. It is the point of interest. You want to turn off, or not the point of interest. You want to disable the point of interest. And there's there's a quick key for that. And for some reason, I'm totally, oh, it, it's a, uh, yeah, shift command. Oh, I don't know what the big problem is here. You want to turn off or auto orientation. Uh, I like doing that because then you just have you just have position rotation that you're dealing with and not, um, sorry for wasting a 30 seconds of your life, but you're never going to get back there watching me fumble for a quick key that I said I knew. Oh, that I couldn't I mean, find. If they had been on me, Harry, it would have been an entire like 45 minutes that were wasted. Uh, my After Effects keeps crashing, and I'm going to show you guys at some point a little bit how far I got. But it's uh, you it's, keep it good, keep yeah. it going because yours is going a lot better than mine. Whatever. Okay. Um. So I'm gonna. Oh, yeah. Let's just parent this. I'm gonna parent you to the Seth jump, and then. Oh, okay. Cool, another cool tip here. You all showed up for a reason. Where was my alpha channel, right? So there's that 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 conundrum, right? It's like, well, I want some lights. Um, whoops. Uh, but the second I add lights with 3D layers, uh, well, they're 3D layers and they respond to the lights. So there's actually a couple different options here. So I'm just duplicating these, um, putting them where I think they should go. And then we'll have some trails coming off of these. The easy thing to do is just to go to your 3D layer in After Effects and just disable lights. Uh, I think it's tap, you tap AA. And then you can say, accept lights off. Oh, I'm showing the alpha channel, so you're never going to actually see. Accept shadows, accept lights off. <laughs> OK. Uh, wait, I think I have it. Oh, I have it. I'm sorry. I have a, a layer called streaks. That actually looks kind of cool. That's my new profile picture right there. You're right there. <laughs> that is cool. Uh, except, okay. That was weird. In silhouette against an arrow inexplicably. I don't even know oh. what it represents. It represents upvotes for every what Reddit post you make. It represents uh, likes on Facebook. It represents likes on Instagram. Oh, oh you know what? Ah, it represents okay, it's what great. you bring to everyone's production when they hire you. Up. Draft uh, draft three D was, was the issue I was having. Uh, so disabling lights right there, so you can have it accept them. But what if you want lights? Um, what if I wanted to use some lighting on this? Another thing you can do, uh, you could select your lights. And I don't know if everybody ever noticed this that lights have an adjustment layer switch on them. So if I don't want my lights to illuminate. Seth, I can change them to adjustment layer lights, or adjustment lights, I guess they would just be called. 
uh, and move it below the layer that I don't want to illuminate. That's another uh, cool option there. Pro tip. Do you have a pro tip thing there? No, I pro guess tip. I just have dad joke. This. I pro just go tip. like this. Um, pro tip. Remember your hotkeys before you go live on YouTube. Yes. So we're going to... Well, no, no, no. Do you know what happened with Hashi last week with hotkeys? Mm -hmm. uh, he set hotkeys within Streamlabs to to trigger like random drops, like Schwarzenegger saying "freeze," and oh. didn't realize those hotkeys were the same hotkeys as common hotkeys he used in After Effects. So while oh, so that doing why, After I, Effects, Schwarzenegger would randomly pop into frame. I and... I saw that. I thought it was just a reference I wasn't getting. Like somebody said something. Yeah, no, you know, was, <laughs> and we didn't notice half the times it happened. Um, okay, I'm going to turn off the other particle layer just because we're in a pre-compositing uh, mess right now. There we go. So we're just going to work on those streaks and then we'll go to, I guess I called these both streaks. So I should get more creative, my naming. So we'll go into particular, oops. We'll go to, we'll apply shine because there's no reason to. Okay, so then uh, now I can set this to an emitter, a light emitter. So it's going to use the lights. Okay, good thing to know is uh, it defaults to a size of 500, which I don't think it should do that, but it does anyway. So even though you've got your light position here, it's going to emit particles in uh, an area of 500 pixels around the light. So I don't want that. Um, in fact, I probably don't want any velocity because we're, this is actually moving. So it's just going to create a, a trail of motion, right? So as I move, there it goes. Yeah. See, look at that. And I'm using my temp camera, right? So I have a more interesting camera move if I turn on. It starts down here. Okay, and then um, then we just make our particles look interesting. So, well, let's queue up to a frame where I actually see some particles. There we go. Yeah, there we go. Uh, now, if I jump to the designer, this should still just show me a... Oh, look at that. It even shows the motion path. Wow, look at that. So we will make these, I don't know, they're kind of that hot pink kind of, where's a good one here? We'll use that. Uh, particles on over life. And then probably want some more. And we'll have the scale down over their life. So they kind of, and then, um, and then add, I would say, a little bit of air turbulence, which is some nice stuff to just kind of push them around. Uh, looks a lot more interesting than just using the the fast physics, you know, displacement. There we go. Yeah. So, so have you just given cool. up, Seth? That's so cool. You're like, a, you're no, uh, your I've comp's given gone. up. Is uh, your comp gone? Of. I've given up on moving. But whenever I change frames, it looks terrible. Whoa, that's not even the right. Oh. I'll come back. I'll show you what I've got, but it's uh, showing the wrong frame. Go ahead. Okay. Keep talking. I, I, I've right. got stuff to show. Okay. Um, all right. Oh, my God. I've got all these lights. In fact, I think I can just turn these. They don't need to be on. So here we go. There. I think I've got it now. Uh... Oh, hey. I, his... I do want to... Oh, yeah. sorry. Go ahead, Seth. No, I'm saying this is as far as I got, and... Um, After Effects keep, keeps crashing whenever I would play it in motion. Um, and it's probably because of the thousands of layers that I, th things that I have going on that could be easily simplified. This is my experimentation process is to try all the worst possible things, get it looking really good, break my computer, and then start over from scratch now knowing <laughs> like like thinking through what were the simpler ways to do the things that I did. And so that's what I would do next, but we don't have time for well, that show. That's the tricky thing. You know, as, as I've been watching this show over the last few weeks, I, it, 
it's much more difficult, I think, than it looks to, you know, Hashi does such a great job with this, um, to both do stuff live, talk while you do it, and do it in such a way that you're imparting information informatively to people, right? Because I got into that, like, what the hell are you doing, Harry? Like, yeah. So, it, and, and, and then thinking and then doing it quickly. So, like, getting all this stuff done, making it not look terrible, uh, doing, you know, trying to get what you would do in maybe a, a full day and try to make it look, you know, usable in, in an hour or 90 minutes or so. Um, it's tough to do. So, um, yeah, it looks like there's a little bit of... Oh, there's like a little fractal noisy kind of thing here. Maybe uh, maybe I can just throw some schmutz in here to kind of blend things together as we try to kind of wrap this up. Oh, yeah, there's like some little rings that kind of pop on as he shoots upward. Um, and then, yeah, the trailing particles are just kind of, kind of there. So let's... Uh, um, I kind of feel like my I've got all these cameras, and none of them are very good. So I'm just going to lock down my camera and just be upfront with the fact that uh, we're not going to get a decent camera move right now. I'm just that's going to be the thing I don't worry about. I'm just going to set the camera in a position that we can see everything. Zoom back, zoom, zoom back in time. Do we zoom in time? We don't really zoom in time. We just kind of move back. Uh, oh, I turned Back off that layer. In time, we now owe some money to Huey Lewis. What? Okay. Who did that? Um, I am not entirely happy with the way I sang that song. I know. Me either. With how you sing. Um, but the. If only we had a chance that... to hear Hashi sing sometime, then we'd really know. If only, know, especially if some, only there was something uh, coming with some, Hashi's singing some voice in it. Eighty, like an eighties hit, like. Uh, to prove that Hashi does everything better than us, every single hey. thing. Hey, you feel good about yourself? Are you feeling better about your, your skills? Then, yeah, Hashi's so Harry, here to make you feel how do you terrible. think? Do how close? How close are we? What do you think? What do you think? <laughs> We've got it's about one forty-three. Mm -hmm. How are you feeling? I, well, I was just going to throw a little bit of glow fractal noise to just kind of make this feel a little bit comped together um, and turning off the layers that I don't think look very good right now. So that's, that was my, that was my approach here. Right Harry, now. could uh, I, could I suggest if you have a little bit of time, just putting a few uh, lights up there with Lux on them to simulate the volumetric lighting they have in the shot. Oh yeah, I was of, totally gonna. I remember yeah. looking at this like, oh yeah, we yeah, can like smart. we'll do that, and I'll we'll get these layers here. Because I think I think then... Lux is underused these days. Lux is great. Um, yeah. Okay. Oh god. Yeah. You guys are never gonna invite me back. What? Uh, yes, we are. We'll do a little bit of Lux, Trap Code Lux. Not to be, not, not Flux. Flux is the original name of form. Oh, yeah. really? And hashtag trivia. Um, trap Code Flux, yeah. And then it got changed. Um, oh, Flux, F-L-U-X. Yeah. Yeah, that's not a good. Yeah, what did what did you think I said? No, Lux? well, that sounds I thought, too much. Fun. No, I didn't think you said what you think I think you said. I thought you said <laughs> Lux, and I was like, that doesn't make sense whatsoever. But no, the uh, trap code, the other thing, that's a different tool altogether. Trap code. Okay. That's an exclamation we make about how great trap code is. What the Lux? Okay. Point you down. Point you down. I did type negative. I just didn't get it in there. <laughs> Trust me. Okay, and then we'll put you off frame. Fall off's pretty sure. Yeah, but I noticed there's... Um, oh, yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, I can totally... Um, what I was going to do is I noticed that up here there was actually a ring of lights. Um, 
And I don't remember how. I think there's like an odd number, like seven or something. It's like, why did they use a heptagon? But uh, my, my cool idea, um, which I'll just talk about real quick, is going to just start with a, uh, a shape layer, right? We can just do a polygon and um, and then do uh, nulls to, or points, you know, like a shape to nulls, and then just um, take those points, uh, put those in, or take the nulls, make them 3D, and then just attach the lights to that. So then you'd have like a nice little perfect heptagon or whatever you want, but I don't think we have time to do that. So we'll just put the one, put the one light in here. Why is this being cropped? Like so? Oh, I think the throw of the light. Uh, yeah, the reach. There you go. There oh, yeah. Oh, I just like that look so much. Yeah, it's great. It does help. Yeah, it really ties it all together like a like a nice rug. <laughs> Ooh, this needs a rug. You know, we don't necessarily together. need a rug, but we do need an episode title. And I don't think Eat Your Cheese Curds and Be Happy is going to cut it. <laughs> so if the chat has some suggestions <laughs> for episode titles, I'd be appreciative. Eat Your Cheese Curds and Be Happy. What's wrong with that? Oh, I had to turn this back on. Um, totally incomplete uh, particle. <laughs> nonsense what? oh you know why why because i added another light that's why i can't see is stuff. there a title title opportunity in my in my incredibly uh knowledgeable basketball trivia knowledge, knowledge base of words too i'm really good with words uh did i say something dumb earlier is what i'm trying to say that we could turn into a title about basketball That silence means yes. And we're all thinking about it. And you have to guess, Whirly. Yeah. I think a lot of what's going on here, you know, like as much as we can throw particle stuff on here, like honestly, never underestimate the power of the circle effect. <laughs> Really, um, like I'm just gonna throw a circle here, and actually this is back it up. I here. have never used the circle effect. You've Not never once. used circle? Oh my god! No. Circle, circle is like everything. Oh, I use uh, circle all the time. Come on, it's so handy. Wow. I use it to max for, stuff out for, for just like this. A, yeah, it's got a stencil mode. Yeah, so or you just want to like, yeah, it has stencil, or you just want a little glow hang orb on, like this. Hang on, there's a plugin in After Effects called Circle that just makes a circle with a yeah <laughs> table flip. Yeah, the whole table just <laughs> gone. God. This is ridiculous. I'm gonna buy, start buying tables just to keep on hand for this show, just right off screen. So I'll just, huh, and then huh. I do circle wish uh, Circle had an aspect control because sometimes I don't, well, it's a circle, I guess. Circle I've is, been drawing masks an and anchoring points and centers for the last 20 years of my life or however long it's been, 10 years. Uh, no, circle is great because then you also, you, you've got like thickness or you've got edge thickness so you can make like, um, rings and uh, all kinds of stuff. Like this. I, we could do a whole. We could do a whole episode on. Um, so yeah, Lux, uh, some circle, and gosh, I wish this was looking a little bit better, but we only have so much hey, time. Hey, that's the theme so. of our show. And then uh, I'll just do a little. Oh, you know what? what, what yeah, hold on. Um, one last thing. Particle. Particle business. Right. Um, if I can pull, look if I can find this preset, because I was like, well, we need a little bit of noisy, like uh, the Star Trek uh, beam kind of effect. And yeah, I'll like a beam. Say beam. A beam. We haven't used a single instance of beam. Oh, uh, there is a circle plugin here. Hmm. Okay, um, go to designer and then. Let's see if I can remember where this preset is. There is, there's actually a sprite that is just some like um, kind of 
soft fractal noise and it is applied to here it is this one called northern lights oh, yeah. so if we uh kind of squeeze this together zusamen and uh oh and i see what you're trying out to do. like that yeah and then you know we, then we could just up uh, apply this we could just actually do this in a, a burst right so we would set this to explode and make a lot more we'll of crank them crank up those uh, particles per second yeah. yeah and then it'll be um just kind of temporary while uh there like that me using the presets in a practical way oh and oops now lighten screen actually lighten no, didn't screen look bad too. Harry, the chat really wants you to use fractal noise and a cylinder for the beam, but the problem with that that I think they're unaware of is that the it would it doesn't have the depth and volume that this particular preset you're using has because it yeah. would you would see the fractal wrapping around the cylinder, uh, whereas this is actually nice and full. That's not a or uh, mirror. I mean, mirror would be good too, and we could actually apply fractal noise directly to the the cylinder itself like you can, you can wrap the plane around you end up with that seam in the back though so you have to kind of map that out with maybe uh, visibility or whatever but this you know this was just like really like don't honor I, I guess the point is to never underestimate the power of a 2d effect because uh um you know looking at this there's there's a lot of like you said you know like like you said volumetric stuff and just glowy things that are uh you know, in this initial moment right here, like this is really just kind of like fractal noisy stuff. And there's like really like you can just see this kind of elliptical orb over everything. Um, I wish I did better with those little track wave things, but thanks for sniffling. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So on. is this? God. <laughs> I'm the, I'm, I'm the worst host this week, Hashi. I mean, uh, Harry, I'm going to be, I'm going to be, I'm going to be the one who's not asked back to this show. Um, well, you're I'm, already on the mug, so I'm looking at the. <laughs> they can scratch oh, yeah. that off very easily. Um, yeah, well, just a couple letters, and I could add. I could change it very. I uh, yeah. that beam actually looks pretty cool. Can we watch this in motion? What happens to it? Oh God, you don't. We don't want to see that just yet. I mean, it's there's lots of things that are roughly there and kind of in place we need to fine-tune the timing and get the camera moved back in like i think we're we're starting to get the elements there to start yeah. to count together um where's where's uh where are you well i think the the point of this You're here gone. is this is a lot of hard work and it, is. it takes a lot of layers to make something like this and a lot there's just there's just a lot of moving parts uh in each of these and i th think hopefully we've learned a little bit of ways a few ways that we could one could get started making something like this oh i'm looking at the left okay. there we go and we learned what i look like when leaping i think I think if you had a day, a full day to do this, dude, it would it would look fantastic. Which is why I'd like it on my desk by the end of the day. <laughs> um, um, yeah, we, this this is totally achievable in a day. Like the the burst and the rings and all the other motion graphic e elements. Um, this probably could have gone. I mean, this could easily go into a second episode. Um, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to be like. Here's this. It's like the Julia Child, right? Like, uh, here's how we we show you how to make the lamb, and then we and then we pull out and the then we abandon lamb. you, <laughs> and then we abandon yeah. you, and say, if you do all that, hopefully you'll end up with a really nice looking lamb. Oh, uh, I do want to make sure that we do a slight correction for the stream. Uh, Disney artists were not involved because this is this Space Jam is not a Disney movie. Ooh, it is w a Warner oh. Brothers. Warner, Warner Brothers. Brothers movie. Very much Warner Brothers. WB. And it, uh, it, it did release today on HBO Max and in theaters. If your uh, area of the world is COVID friendly for going to movie theaters, you can go watch it there. Absolutely. WB. Yeah, they're in. Uh, yeah, 
I know. They're, we've they're uh, studio. we've not seen it. We're not being sponsored by HBO Max. So if you hate it, it's not it's not our fault. We didn't do it. We clearly don't know how to do it in, in an hour. We know how to do it. You know, if you give can't us even, a few extra people and a lot of time, we can make it happen. Can't even do it in an hour. Um, yeah, I, I forgot that. I, yeah, sorry, I didn't mean the. No, look, that, no, my gosh. Right, you underserve. The you didn't underserve. You, look WB. at how cool that looks, and you got us on the track. You got us on the path toward doing this. Um, by the way, Harry, the way you feel right now is the way Hashi and I feel every week at the end of at the <laughs> end of uh, the effects and show. So. <sighs> but I do want to thank you in front of God and everyone here for coming on this show and trying all this stuff live in front of people. Um, this was a blast, dude, having you here. Um, it was fun. Yeah. Neither of us were able to Don't get come. to a finished comp. That's okay. That was part of the pitch for this show originally. So um, uh, I am excited by what we the starting points that we put in here, and I hope that people uh, hope that fail people are in front of to, Huh? in front of to fail in front of dozens of people yes i hope other people are able to do that (laughs) no i hope other people are able to like uh, to open up particular and mess around and make something uh cool that we were attempting to make and if you can do it show it to us for sure yeah it's uh it was it's it's interesting to try to show uh some of these components like the the little touch points that i have in particular of like these uh, the sprites or the, the the presets in terms of either using the preset, you know, and modifying it or some of the, like the basics, right? That little explosion basic um, can be a helpful starting point. And it's just, it's interesting for me to kind of dive into the the front side of it instead of the back end of it, you know, like making the things that go into it and uh, try to dive back in and, and make stuff. So it's, it's interesting for me to try to do stuff like this. Yeah, and then uh, always make sure to put uh, Lux Lux. on it because that does make it Lux. Lux makes it looks way better. Yeah, we Um, actually haven't used Lux on the show yet, I don't think. So that was a really great recommendation, Michael, our friend Michael up there in the sky. Guys, thank you so much for an excellent show. Thank you for tuning in to VFX and Chill. Tune in next week for another special guest, and that it was already booked. It's not because Harry did anything wrong this week. We're not. (laughs) I don't want anyone to read into that. Um, uh, we're very excited to uh, have the next guest, but we're very happy that Harry came on this week as well. Thank you, Harry, so much for your time and for uh, for trying something extremely difficult this week. Always willing to fail in front of people, <laughs> and that, my friends, is the trick to succeeding in this business: being willing. I, God, if I had something funny to say right then. See, being willing to fail in front of people. Do you see what I did? I just did it. I just did it for all of you. Okay, it's time for some credits. Here they are. 